The supplies you will need for this mask are two pieces of fabric for the mask front, cut eight by eight, two pieces of fabric for the lining of the mask, cut eight by eight, thread to do the decorative stitching with, thread to sew the mask with, two pieces of quarter inch elastic, cut seven inches long, and you will need the downloadable PDF pattern for the mask to cut out for the shape of the mask. Cut out your pattern piece, lay it on the front piece of the fabric, trace around all sides, and then cut this out. You'll do the same thing for your lining fabric. We're now going to sew our face mask front piece together and our face mask lining piece together. This needs to be right sides together. And we're going to sew across the curved end with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And we're going to do the same thing for the lining piece. The lining piece though, we want to leave an opening here so that we can insert a filter later. So make a mark where you want to start and stop. Also sew these right sides together. So now we're going to sew on the same curved edge, 3 8 inch seam allowance, up to our mark, back stitch, go over to our other mark, and sew all the way to the end. I've stitched the center seam on the mask front and I've stitched the center seam on the lining for the mask and you can see where I've stopped and started to leave this opening for turning. Since we are working with a curved seam, you may want to take your scissors and just clip those seams. They'll lay much nicer and flatter. Do that on both the lining and the front mask piece. Now you're ready to go press. Now that we have the center seams pressed, we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch those seam allowances down. I'm using the DX3000 QVP machine. This machine has 351 built-in stitches. It has a touchscreen display. It has the automatic presser foot lift, needle up, needle down, and those wonderful thread trimmers. It has a built-in needle threader as well. But the beautiful thing about this machine is there is a 12-inch throat space from the needle to the right of the machine. For more information on this machine, you can go to jukihome.com or you can visit or call one of our Juki dealers to get more information. I'm going to be doing a top stitch right along the edge of the seam to hold those seam allowances down. And for this technique, I want to use the S foot that comes with the machine. This foot is a small foot and when I'm using the center needle position, it has a very small toe here, so I can get a narrow seam up against my seam allowance. I'm going to snap this foot onto my machine just by lowering the presser foot. And I want that seam to be just a little bit away from the center seam. So I'm going to align the edge of the foot with the edge of the seam and I'm just going to do a straight stitch down that seam just to hold that seam allowance down
and we're going to do that on both sides of the front of the face mask and on both sides of the lining fabric of the face mask. So I'm going to do that on this side and then I'm going to do that on the lining as well. Now that we have our seams top stitched down on both the mask front and the lining piece, we're going to sew these two pieces together. Place right sides together, match your center seams, pin this in place, and we're going to sew the top and the bottom of the mask together. So I'm going to sew across here and then I'm also going to sew across the bottom of the mask. I've switched to the regular presser foot and I just have the fabric against the edge of the right side of the foot and that's the seam allowance I'm going to use to sew this down with. So now I have my top seam sewn and the bottom seam sewn. We're now going to turn this right side out and take it to the iron and just press those seams nicely. And then we're going to come back and we're going to finish the side seams and add the elastic. And we're going to add a little bit of decorative stitching to this just so we can personalize our mask. Before we add our decorative stitching around the edge of our mask, we need to finish the edges of the sides so that when we turn this under, we'll have a nice clean finished edge back there. And to do that, I'm going to use one of my overlock stitches built into my sewing machine. The stitch I'm going to use is located in my utility stitches. To get to the utility stitches, touch this right here and I have my utility stitches in my window. If I touch the arrow, the window will open up and you will see all of the stitches. I'm going to use stitch number 22. That's one of the overlock stitches that I have on this machine. There are several other options. This tells me to use foot C and that foot comes with the machine and we're going to put that on to finish our side seams with. The foot the machine tells us to use is our C foot and this foot has a guide in the middle of the foot that runs all the way back underneath the foot and what this will allow to happen is as we stitch the thread will jump over and that guide will create a slack in the thread so that it doesn't pull back against the fabric and cause the seam to tunnel. So I've attached that foot to the machine. I'm going to line the edge of the fabric up against the guide that's on the foot. And when I stitch, I'm just going to keep the edge of the fabric riding right against that guide. We're going to do this to both sides. When you get to the end of the fabric, you're going to touch the lock stitch and the machine will stop, lock in place, and trim your threads if you have that selected. So now I have a nice clean finish along the edge and I have this on both of my edges. Now that we have our mask completely put together, now comes the hard part. We have to decide which one of the 351 stitches we want to use to personalize our mask. I have selected stitch 167. 
So to personalize our mask, we're going to sew a decorative stitch right along this edge on the top and the bottom of the mask. I've attached the clear satin stitch foot to the machine. I'm going to place the edge of the mask against the right side of the presser foot. Drop the presser foot. Now when you start sewing with the decorative stitch, you want to lock those stitches. So if you'll touch the tie-on stitch to start, you'll see the machine is locking those stitches into place. Then I'm just going to sew my decorative stitch completely around the outside of the mask. I'm keeping the edge of the presser foot and the edge of the fabric together. I also changed the color of my thread so that I have a contrasting color so that this stitch will show up. As you start going around the curve, just gently guide your foot. If you need to stop, reposition and just gently guide the fabric around that curve. As we're coming to the end, we want to do the same thing. We want to stop that decorative stitch and have those stitches tie off. Now if I were to use the tie off button, which is the dot here, what it's going to do is finish the pattern and then tie the stitch. But I don't want it to stitch beyond the edge of my fabric. So if I sew right to the edge, and now I want it to stop and lock those stitches. Reverse has a different function when we're working in our decorative stitches. When I touch the reverse, look what happens. It stopped and locked my stitches right where I had stopped. So now I actually have my stitches. My mask is personalized. They're locked off here and I have nice decorative stitches on the top and the bottom of my mask. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our edges under just about a half inch and we're going to top stitch this down into place and then we will come back and put our elastic on. So I have my side seams stitched and we're now going to apply the elastic. Take the elastic, put it on the back of the mask, and I like to extend it just a little bit beyond because we're going to stitch on that straight stitch line that we previously stitched. Pin it into place, pull the elastic around, making sure that the elastic doesn't get twisted as you're turning it. So make sure that it's laying flat and pin it to the other side. I extended it down a little bit. Now I'm going to select our multi-motion straight stitch on the machine and I'll show you that stitch in just a minute. And we're going to stitch right back over that top stitch with this reinforcing stitch. So this is the stitch I'm going to use. It's in our utility stitches and it's stitch number 009. It's a triple straight stitch and that will give us a nice reinforcing seam to hold that elastic down. I've aligned this under the foot so that the needle is going to be hitting exactly on the previous line that we sewed. Remove your pin as the machine stitches over the elastic. And this nice triple straight stitch 
it will really enforce that elastic. It will hold it down so that when you're wearing the mask, the elastic won't pull away. And at the end, you can touch reverse. We've now attached our elastic to both sides of the mask, and you're ready to start wearing your mask. Don't forget we've left that opening there, so if you choose to put a filter of some type in there, you have access to that.